Hello and welcome back. My name is Mark Baker and I want to welcome you to these videos. I'm so glad that you've joined me again today. And for those who have not joined us before, we've been talking about the faith of the Son of God. We've been talking about from Romans chapter 12 and verse 3, how Peter, how Paul told his readers to think soberly of themselves, for God has dealt to each one of us the measure of faith. We looked in the last video at 2 Peter, and I want to pick up here again in verse 3, 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. It says, According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. And I want to pay particular attention, we were talking about this in the previous video, that it says he's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge. Where do we receive the knowledge of God? Where do we receive the knowledge of the provisions of God? We receive it through the word of God. We've been talking about the need to be spending time giving continuous thought, focused attention to the word of God on a daily basis. I've talked about, we don't, we're not talking about reading chapter after chapter after chapter. You may read two or three chapters and all of a sudden a verse just stands out to you or a section just stands out to you. You need to stop, look at that, start thinking about that, seeing what the Holy Spirit is trying to talk to you about. I've talked about the need of taking verses and meditating on them. You know, we can take the verse, chapter, verse 2, 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 2. It says, grace and peace are multiplied to us through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. So if you, there's many people who are praying for peace, but that's not how peace comes. Peace does not come through prayer. It comes through the knowledge of God. It comes through revelation knowledge. It comes from taking the word of God, planning it, and allowing it to become revelation knowledge to us. And so you can take that one verse, grace and peace are multiplied in my life through the knowledge of him, of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. And you can meditate on it. When I talk about meditating on it, we're conceiving that seed. We're taking that seed. We're planting it in our soul. We're conceiving it. And as you meditate upon it, you conceive that seed and it begins to grow deep into your soul. You start getting a deep root system. And then suddenly you get that, that, that it's in Mark chapter 4, it talks about first the blade, then the ear, then the full fruit of the season. And I used it in, in previous videos, I used the illustration. First, if you had an analog antenna, as you're jiggling it around, you might see a little bit kind of fuzzy picture and a little bit audio, but you can't really understand what anyone's saying. You can't really understand who the characters are. You have the blade. Then the ear. You're getting a little bit more tuned into the channel. You're starting to see things a little bit clearer. You can identify characters. They're not completely crisp and clear. You get, the audio is clear. You can tell who's talking, but it's not completely where it needs to be. And then the full fruit. Suddenly, you've meditated on it until it becomes high definition, crisp, clear picture. You can see in your, in your soul, you have that picture you can see yourself walking with his grace. You can see yourself walking with his peace. And that's where we're that's what we're doing. We're not confessing to possess. We're not saying it over. This is not a formula where we say it over and over. What we're doing is we're conceiving it. We're speaking it to conceive it, to plan it. Grace and peace are multiplied in my life through the knowledge of God and through the knowledge of my Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace are multiplied in my life. Grace and peace are multiplied through the knowledge. God has given me all things pertaining to life and godliness. I have all things pertaining to life and godliness. I have all things pertaining to life and godliness. What am I doing? I am planting the seed in the soul of my, you know, into my mind, into my soul, allowing that seed to take root. And I said in the last video, we have been given all things pertaining to life and godliness. The one problem I see that I've seen over the years with people who, you know, follow the so-called, and I don't like to give labels, but the so-called faith message, is it's easy to place blame on the receiver. In other words, oh, that person, you know, for example, you see somebody who died, they didn't get healed. Well, they just didn't have enough faith. If they didn't have enough faith, 
Then why in Romans chapter 12 does it say that God has given to every man the measure of faith, every woman the measure of faith? And let's just look at that real quick. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 3, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, to every woman that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. And what I said before, God doesn't give one person a thimble full of faith, another person a cup of faith, another person a third cup of faith. He gives every single person the measure of faith. How do we receive that faith? If you look over at Romans chapter 10, in verse 17, it says, So faith cometh by hearing, in hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh. When you hear the word of God, when you hear an anointed message, when you tune into videos like this one, and you hear a person speaking under the anointing of the Spirit of God, faith cometh. Because what we're doing is we're casting seed. As you listen, you're receiving that seed into your soul. There will be messages that you hear, and the Spirit of God will quicken it to you, and you need to take that message and listen to it over and over and over. Why? Because you felt the quickening. You felt a, you know, the spark when you were listening to the message. That's the Spirit of God prompting you. And the Bible talks about being forgetful hearers. We need to listen. We need to meditate. We need to think on, ponder, take those verses that he's quickening to you. Take those messages and re-listen to them. I have one message right now that it's part of, it's a five-part series, but the last message in the series, the Holy Spirit just started quickening some things to me. I've listened to that fifth message 10 times in the past couple weeks, maybe 11 times. What am I doing? The Holy Spirit quickened that because he has something in that message that he wants to get across to me. He wants to become revelation knowledge. I do not want to be a forgetful hearer. I want to hear and hear and hear and allow him to work, to wash over my soul with that revelation knowledge. Because when it becomes revelation knowledge, faith cometh by hearing and hearing and hearing. As we hear, as we meditate upon the word of God, we are assured that faith cometh. Faith cometh. You notice how he said that. It doesn't, he didn't say we get faith by hearing. He said faith cometh by hearing. Hearing and hearing and hearing. A repetitive hearing. Not just hearing once, but hearing it over and over and over. Allowing it to wash over the water with the water of the word. Allowing the Holy Spirit to wash our souls till it becomes revelation knowledge. What you will see in looking at the faith message Many people talk about faith, they talk about unbelief. And it gets confusing at different times. You need to understand as we're looking at this, uh, we, one reason why we're not receiving from God is because we are full of unbelief. So let me explain that to you. We'll probably just start it in this video, but we'll continue with the thought as we move forward. A belief is a firm persuasion based upon knowledge. A firm persuasion based upon knowledge. Unbelief, then, you could say, is a lack of persuasion based upon a lack of knowledge. In the last video, we looked at 1 Peter chapter 2.24, which tells us that by his stripes we were healed. I said were is past tense. We were healed by the, blood, by the broken body of Jesus. That healing provision was provided before you or I were born. But if no one comes to you and tells you, or you never find in the Word that it was by His stripes you were healed, you might hear of people talking about God healing people today, but all you have is hearsay knowledge. You can agree to it, but you cannot walk in revelation of it because you do not have the Word for it. Faith comes by hearing. Believing is a result of hearing, of becoming convinced. It's a result of walk of revelation, knowledge springing up from the spirit. Belief and unbelief operates in the soul. Faith operates in the spirit. I once heard a message, and they were talking about the two sides of a coin: faith and, and belief. That you have to have both in order to have the power present. It took me a long time to understand that, and I'm just now really getting a revelation of what the minister was talking about. 
the key to understanding it is to understand that faith works in the realm of the spirit. It's inside your born again spirit. You have the measure of faith. You have the same faith that God used to create planets, to create the universe. You walk in the faith of the Son of God is what Paul tells us in Galatians chapter 2. A belief is a firm persuasion based upon knowledge. Knowledge in your soul. Beliefs and unbelief operates in the soul. Way back at the beginning of these videos, I used the illustration of a bottle of shout. And I talked about it, if you look at the bottle of shout, and if you're not familiar with it, it's a cleaning product that is focused on getting stains out of clothes and it does an amazing job. But if you look at the bottle of shout, it has a squeeze trigger for you to squeeze and spray it onto the clothes. But if you look at the spout, where, well, you could say the spout where the shout comes out, it has an on position and an off position. If that nozzle is in the off position, you can squeeze the trigger all you want, but the shout will never come out and will never interact with the stain and the stain will remain. You have all of the shout required. You have been given all of the provision to remove that stain inside that bottle. But because the nozzle is turned to the off position, you cannot benefit from the product that's within the bottle. So you have been given, if I gave you a bottle of shout, you could say that you have been given everything pertaining to stain removal through the bottle of shout. But without that nozzle being turned from off to on, that provision that has been given will provide no benefit to you. You have to turn that nozzle from off to on. When you have that nozzle on, you now have the chemical inside and you have the nozzle working together to produce a manifestation of stain removing power. You are three part being. You have a spirit that's been recreated in the image of God. You have a soul and you have a body. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1, it talks about we present our bodies as living sacrifices. But then in Romans chapter 12, it's verse 2, it tells us to be not conformed to this world, be not pressed into the mold of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. What we can look at, when we look at 2 Peter and he talks about all things been given to you through the knowledge of him that, is, that has called you to glory and virtue, you have been given the full measure of shout. You have a sickness in your life that's the stain that needs to be removed. So you have the full measure of shout within your spirit to remove the stain of sickness, the stain of disease, the stain of poverty, the stain of bad habits. Do you see what I'm saying here? You have the full measure of shout. But the nozzle, which is your soul, is in the off position when you become a Christian. You turn it to the on position by meditating in the Word, by planting the Word, allowing it to become revelation knowledge. As you do that, as that seed begins to grow up into revelation knowledge, that nozzle begins to turn from off to on. And when revelation comes up and you receive that full harvest of revelation knowledge, you are in the full on position, and you can apply the power within, that provision, that healing power, that healing provision that's in your spirit will flow freely now to remove the stain of sickness from your body, to remove the stain of disease from your body. As you learn to walk in this and become proficient in this, as you continue to meditate, as you continue to grow in that revelation, you will start to conceive and see yourself walking in health. But then as you take time and you're meditating on that, by his stripes I was healed. He sent his word and healed all of my diseases. His word, Proverbs chapter 3, is health and medicine to all my flesh. As you're meditating on that, you start conceiving that image. You start, you know, conceiving, developing yourself in that revelation knowledge. You start turning that nozzle in your soul from off to on. In that shout, 
that power within you, because the power is already there. You have all of the power you need within your spirit, but it's a matter of getting that power out where it can interact and remove the stain of sickness, disease, habits, whatever need you have in your life. He has provided for you through the knowledge. Where is knowledge planted? It's planted in the soul. As you take the seed of God's word and you begin to meditate upon it, it becomes revelation and you start turning that nozzle from off to on and the shout, with the power within will begin to remove, be able to be applied to the situations on the outside and you'll start seeing those stains being removed. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus if you've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And if you have not, it's as simple as believing in your heart, confessing it with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Lord Jesus, I acknowledge I'm a sinner. I believe that you've died on that cross, that you provided redemption for me. I acknowledge my sin. I receive your forgiveness that was provided on the cross in your redemptive work. And I declare that you are my Savior in Jesus' name. Just a simple prayer like that is all it takes. And if you just prayed that for the first time, please send us an email, prayer at mbdevotional.com. God has provided every single need, but what happens is we focus too much on the need instead of the seed. We need to set our minds on things above. That's what Paul tells us in Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. We talked about that. Set your mind on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. We a lot of times leave that valve within our soul in the off position because we're so focused on our need. And I understand when you have pain in your body, when you have the symptom that just won't seem to go away and it just nags at you, your body's screaming at you, it's not easy to turn your attention away from the pain, away from the symptoms to the Word of God. But when you start understanding that God has provided everything, and it's just a matter of getting your mind renewed to the provision, to the truth of what God has provided to you, it becomes a much different effort. We are not denying, because those symptoms are there, that is truth. We are not denying that the pain does not exist. That is, that is a fact. It's not, I'm sorry, it's a fact. The truth, though, is that by a stripes you were healed. We focus on the truth and not the fact. We will make mistakes on the journey. God loves you. Your mistakes are not going to cause him to have problems with you or to see you any less. As we saw in Psalms chapter 78, he, with the Israelites under the law, had every right to pour out a lot more wrath than what we see in the Old Testament, but he remembered that they were just human and had mercy on them. How much more is his mercy available to us today when we're not under law, but we're under the blood of Christ, when we're sealed into Christ with the Holy Spirit? As we start winding down the video today, as we start coming to the close, I want you to think about something that Jesus told his disciples. We find it in Luke chapter 12. In verse 22, we'll start reading. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, neither for the body what you shall put on. The life is more than meat, the body more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feeds them. How much more are you better than the fowls? And which of you, with taking one thought, can add to a stature one cubit? If ye then be not able to do the thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothes the grasses which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And seek not what you sh shall eat or what you shall drink, neither be you of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nation of the world seek after. And your Father knows that you have needs of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. The Father knows that you have need of healing. The Father knows that you have need of provision. 
The Father knows about the inflation that we're seeing in the world today. The Father knows about the shortages that are beginning to increase. The Father knows about the wars. The Father knows about the natural disasters. He knows that we have need of these things. It will do us no good for us to focus on these things, and that's why Paul told us, set your affection on things above. We're not denying. We're not saying no to medical science. If you didn't necessarily have the knowledge, the revelation knowledge to keep it from coming, sometimes you need to go see a doctor. Sometimes you need the medicine to help you while you're spending time focusing not on the symptoms, not on the disease, but on the Word of God to develop that revelation knowledge. Because if we know that the Father has know, knows that we have need of healing, and according to Peter, that he has provided that healing, then we do not have to worry about it. Even though our body's screaming, the symptoms are there, the pain is there, I acknowledge that. That is reality. That is fact. But it is not truth. Truth is that by his stripes you were healed. It says, But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added, added unto you. Yes, the pain is there. Yes, the symptoms are here. Yes, the lack is there. It's screaming at us. But we just need to tell it. The Father is aware of you, and he's provided my provision. So I choose not to focus on you. I choose not to focus on you, pain. I choose not to focus on you, disease. For I call you healed in Jesus' name. In Colossians, it tells us that every knee must bow at the name of Jesus. Well, sickness, pain, you have to bow your knee. I choose not to consider you, but I choose to consider the word. Do you see the difference? We're not denying and that's what a lot of people get into trouble with, with faith. They deny the symptoms. They deny the, the sickness, the pain, the lack. We're choosing to not acknowledge them. They are there, but we're just not going to set our attention on them. We're setting our attention on things above by setting our attention on the Word of God. Our time is up today. I thank you for joining me. God has provided for you everything pertaining to life and godliness. It's just up to you to open the Bible, to put your nose into it, meditate, allow the Holy Spirit to work with you, to bring about that revelation knowledge. And you will see, as you set your attention on the things above, His provision began to manifest in your life. But remember, it's first the ear, then the blade, then the full fruit in the season. You did not get in the situation you are in overnight. And you have to give the Word time. The good thing about the Word of God is it's supernatural, and the Holy Spirit will accelerate the growth. The harvest will come, but you have to continue to meditate upon the Word of God, allowing Him to build up your revelation knowledge. And as that revelation knowledge comes into line with what's already in your spirit, you'll see that nozzle turn from off to on, and you'll see the stain remover pouring out of your spirit in the stain of sickness, disease, poverty being eradicated because now your soul is in line with your spirit and it's two against one and you'll see yourself walking in his miraculous provision till the next video please let us know how we can pray for you send us an email at prayer at mbdevotional.com and also tell us what god is doing tell us how he's speaking to you and the things that he's doing in your life Carol and I love you, we pray for you, and we're very thankful for each and every one of you. We're thankful for the Holy Spirit to draw you to these videos. God bless you.